response video to uh, contrapoints. Uh, yeah, nicotine. Um, yes, I don't know. I don't know what his point in making this video was. So basically, he starts the video by saying, I'm going to say some crap that's going to piss you off, but hear me out because I'll explain the stupid thing I'm saying. And the stupid thing he's saying is, is this reason rally is a misnomer, misnamed. Um, I don't think the name is the problem. I think the problem is that the atheists in it aren't really atheists, okay? They, they're all, they have all kinds of um, theology, um, you know, all kinds of psychology, all kinds of manifestations of um, hope and delusion and run away from the truthism. Is, um, so, yeah, they're kind of lame atheists, and that's really the problem. But this idea that we should be um, focused on rational explanations of, uh, of reality, reasonable ones, logically co coherent. Yeah, logically coherent. That's a good word. You know, where there isn't some other logic, you know, other compelling um, alternative um, explanation kind of stuff. And there's no rational or reasonable alternative explanation. So he's basically in this video trying to make an argument that somehow all the great logical people of history were religious. Well, duh. I mean, this is, this is stupid. I mean, they didn't have the benefit of all the rock-solid science we have. So, of course, when they didn't know what microbes were, I mean, it's going all the way back to Aristotle, for cripes sakes. This is idiotic. I mean, they had nothing to go on. So, yeah, the world was really, really confusing. But it's not really, really confusing anymore. We figured out the whole star thing, thunder, lightning, all of this crap. Um, you know, we focused it all. And none of these people you're going to recite uh, wouldn't find that, in, that, that evidence very compelling. And they probably, probably would appreciate you giving them the benefit of the doubt and not calling them assholes. Because you're basically saying they were assholes. You're basically saying um, they were unreasonable. No, they weren't unreasonable. They were reasonable for their time. And in this time, it's unreasonable to be a theist. It's an unreasonable philosophy to say faith is good enough. That's unreasonable, especially when there's an alternative explanation that's lucid, um, uh, evidentiary, weighty, um, com almost complete. It almost can be said to be complete proof. Um, so this is just bullshit. And Frege, who is the inventor of symbolic mathematical logic we use today, was a Lutheran. Uh, Kurt Gödel, in the 20th century, one of the greatest logicians, was some kind of personal theist. And uh, De Morgan, another. Uh, I mean, geez, I mean, you know, it really is irritating because I can just imagine. I mean, I feel bad, like for the Einsteins of the universe and the rest of it. You know, because you live your life, you do some stuff, and then these people just show up 100 years later and start throwing your name out and saying shit about you, and you're just like, you know, fuck you. I did say in that last book I wrote that life was complete shit, and it was stupid. I mean, I did do that, asshole. Big logician in the 19th century was some kind of wacky spiritualist. So there certainly are atheist logicians, uh, Bertrand Russell notably, but they're, they're not, you know, there's... The, many of the greats, in fact, I would say the greatest logicians have... Well, whatever. Logicians. There's no point in talking about the greatest logicians and their opinions if you're not going to progress their logic into the modern era and say, okay, yeah, if they knew what we know now, there's no way they would have said what they said then. And if you can't give them that much of a benefit of the doubt, you're really being unfair. And religious. So you can't just say that... Uh, you know, theism is irrational. Yes, you can. You can just fucking say it. All right? It is as ludicrous as saying, you know, Martians cut off O.J. Simpson's wife's head. It's, uh, it, the, I mean, you go right down the list of all the things that would be comparably stupid to believe now. All right? It has no rational foundation. All the testimony is coming from unreliable witnesses. There's, there's, it's, there's no more reason than for me to believe somebody when they say they're Napoleon or to believe some guy who says the aliens came down and showed him the magic pen. 
There'd be no reason to believe these stupid, silly fables, these nonsensical stories that have zero evidentiary value, nothing to them. They're just made-up canards of people's fucking wishful thinking. The end of the story. That's the reasonable conclusion. It is unreasonable to conclude anything else. The only way you can conclude something else is out of personal bias, and that has nothing to do with being fucking reasonable. So this is idiotic. It is unreasonable to believe in God. It's unreasonable to believe in God. It's unfucking reasonable to believe in a fucking deity that's never demonstrated its existence. It's unfucking reasonable. There is evidence beyond a reasonable doubt that that kind of theory is stupid. There are people who are theists are irrational. The people who have understood logic and read the whole process of reasoning most intimately. People like Aristotle and Frege. We're religious. Well, you, you already said it once, now you're going to say it again and again? So what, again? And they were all so ignorant by our standards. They had one one-thousandth of the knowledge we had, and they figured out a whole bunch of stuff. And the only thing they, yeah, they obviously couldn't draw conclusions because they didn't know what thunder was, they didn't know what lightning was, they didn't know what the stars were, they didn't know what the fucking anything, they didn't know how deep the goddamn ocean was. At the same time, many of the great irrationalists have been atheists. We can name Schopenhauer, Nietzsche, Sartre, Camus. All these people are atheists, and all of them are irrationalists. I don't know exactly what that means. Irrationalists? What, what they declared themselves irrationalists? They actually walked up to people and says, I'm irrational? I mean, that doesn't even make any sense. So it seems to me like there's something besides reason that really forms the distinction between what causes someone to become an atheist and causes someone to be a theist. Not to mention the just I mean, you can justify theism with reason. You just no, you can't. Not against anybody with any kind of knowledge of the evidence and any kind of knowledge, of, well, the evidence of human nature, of of history, and of um, the biological, the physical, the chemical sciences. Nobody with knowledge of that shit is going to have any problem whatsoever making it quite clear that anybody who still retains any kind of belief in the God is a fucking idiot, okay? They're being unreasonable because that scientist will provide a reasonable explanation for everything that exists, and they don't need to rely on any kind of fables or phony bullshit because the evidence points in one fucking direction. None of the evidence points in that direction. None of it. Absolutely zero evidence points in that God direction. Every single bit of physical evidence, every single bit of observed evidence, every bit of every kind of legitimate evidence points in one fucking direction. God is a fable. It's my atheism with reason, or you can feel something else. But I just don't think that the, the issue here is that we're, 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 we're celebrating reason as the, well, I don't think reason inevitably leads to atheism, I'll put it that way. Oh, well, yeah, I don't know. So, so yeah, you can actually be reasonable. You can have um, logic, and you can have an informed mind, and somehow you'll conclude that faith is the way you should derive your belief system. So if you if you taste it and it tastes good, it must be inherently good. It must taste good to all human beings. It must be intrinsically valuable to the God that you're going to make up. I mean, none of that makes any fucking sense. It's complete bullshit. Um, the, the, the f knowledge is the key to this thing. You cannot be knowledgeable and draw the conclusion there exists a God because the evidence is completely in contradiction to any kind of fable like that. And I think looking at history and looking at individual cases will show you that. I'm sorry, it won't. And so I think perverting history, like I said, you just perverted history. You just perverted the history of human intelligence. You just ignored the fact that in the last 4,000 years or 2,000 years or even more importantly over the last 100 years, we have gleaned bazillions of tons of um, uh, uh, um, cognitive understanding, that we have completely redefined the depths of the knowledge that we have acquired and that we can put in books. Pulling at the Reason Rally is not the best title because I just don't think it's really a rally for reason. I think it's a rally for atheism. I don't think those two things are the same. Well, then you're an idiot. <laughs> oh, come on. Faith as a source of... Right there, you can just use the word faith. If, if you just uh, pointed out that the um, Reason Rally was against using faith as, as, a, as a way to derive understanding. There, so that's it. That's the end of the argument. I mean, even that one alone, um, you can win on. Okay, that nobody should derive a belief system based on, based on intuition or faith or just some sort of, I want to believe it. That that's illogical, nonsensical, not 
in any demonstrable way ever connected to how we acquire understanding of reality. Ever. Does that work? So there's that objection. And my other objection is that, you know, a lot of the people who are the central figures, people like Richard Dawkins, P.Z. Myers, I mean, those are good guys like i really i like their i like their science writing it's uh very clear very accessible uh and yet sophisticated uh but at the same time i think that when people like pz myers and richard dawkins when they start talking about god and religion they they, they're sort of they have a very shallow critique of religion which is maybe a critique that says oh please (laughs) i mean that's not even that's not even fair i mean i you know whatever dawkins smockins as a person, um, but but the, the critique of religion is quite simple. Okay, that it's an ancient fable, that it's an old dumb um, um, guess. It's a bad guess. There, there's the critique. Uh, we have to grow out of it. Grow up. The, the we've discovered the truth. Okay, uh, thunder isn't God farting. S- serves to combat shallow religion, uh, like the fundamentalism that has sort of become very prominent in the United States. But still, they're not the most interesting religious or anti-religious thinkers around. Uh, so I feel a little bit lukewarm about that, not to mention the scientism and that whole you know, cultural thing that goes along with this. But still... I don't even know what that means. You're uncomfortable with scientism as, as opposed to whatism. What, what's the alternative? I think it's Rick Santorum that really, really scared me into just enthusiastically, enthusiastically deciding to go to the Reason Rally. Because I think we really, I think everyone should support the Reason Rally, even religious people who are dissatisfied with the political status quo. Or the well, why? The problem with the Reason Rally is it's just an excuse for a party. Okay, nothing real is going to get done here, and nothing really focused on reason. Okay, all they're doing is arguing with people who are. Um, that they are being deliberately and willfully unreasonable. I mean, the religious are not being fair to the facts or the evidence. So they're being unreasonable. And that's worth saying. But the point is, is the people saying it don't have too much credibility, in my opinion, because they look at the same... They, they have perverted facts, too, and talk about beautiful universes and whatnot. They're lost in their own bullshit. They're lost in, in, in their own denial of what the facts really point to, which is a DNA molecule replicating for no good reason whatsoever. The religious right has a, an iron grip on you know, U.S. politics. I think that people who are not pro- Christians, people who are not fundamentalist Christians and are Americans, need to start demanding a political voice. They need to say, look... This is not a Christian nation. Yeah, well, you don't demand a political voice. You, you know, you, realistically, you have to demand a friggin' democracy, a representative democracy. You know, one that actually represents people, not geography. So you're going to have to get on board with instant runoff voting and get rid of um, the geographic voting districts for legislative vo- bodies. Or all of this talk about we're going to have to demand is, is going to be irrelevant. But you can't demand from a majority. Okay, you can only demand when you are represented. So you have to first get represented before you can demand anything. You have to have a voice before they can hear it. One group of people does not get to decide everything goes on here. This country is not a theocracy. It's at least... As, as long as you know they hold that majority and they don't have any um, veto minority, as long as the, um, the minorities of this country are kept um, locked out of the system by winner-take-all elections in geographic districts, yeah, then we'll continue to be represented by our geography, and our geography is always going to have one kind of minor- majority, all right? Unless you live in Harlem or San Francisco, um, you're out of luck if you're um, a minority of any kind. I mean, you know, unless unless you can somehow, um, uh, you know, consolidate all of the cigarette smokers in one state or all of the believers in the right to die in one village... Yeah, you're not ever going to have any representation in our governmental system because it doesn't care about what you think. It only cares about where you live. Halfway to a democracy, it kind of has some superficial resemblances to democracy, and as such, we demand a voice. And so even if you are religious, even if you think that 
<clears throat> Dawkins and P.Z. Myers and all these guys. Yeah, you see, you don't get a voice until you have a vote. So until you have a vote in the Congress, you're not going to have a voice. So that's the catch of the whole thing. You have to be able to, the only way you get to veto their obnoxiousness by saying, we're not going to play along and we're going to screw you over, um, is that you have to have the power to screw them over if they fuck with you too much. And you can only do that when we have actual political power, and we're only going to have actual political party, power when we destroy the two-party system. As idiots. I think there's still probably something to, to be happy about with this reason rally, because it will break the utter homogeneity of the U.S. political scene, and it'll give some attention to an alternative group of people. Yeah, well, we know it's not going to be good attention. You know that, right? I mean, you do realize that. that unless you go in there dead serious and dead hard... That it's just going to be buffoonery, and then it, it, you know the cameras are going to be running when everybody's drunk, you know, chasing girls down the, the halls of the hotel or something. You know that's what's going to happen. You know that's what's going to make the news if any of this makes the news. All right, it's it's going to be the buffoonery that'll get captured. Um, atheists are just going to end up looking bad. Um, how much you want to bet? Who have an agenda and a set of interests that's different from the monotonous stuff that we see with this Republican primary, for instance. And I think that... Yeah, well, it's like, the you know, they should have a Democratic primary. I guess we should have had a Democratic candidate that would run against the stupid idiot jackass that's president, but no one even had enough balls to do that. Other voices need to be heard. And so at the very least, in the name of pluralism and diversity and breaking this pseudo-fascist unanimous... Yeah, well, it's not pseudo, and yeah, you know, it really isn't. It is pretty much fascist. I mean, it's majoritarian fascist, but that's what it is. Um, it's um, yeah, we're we we've got we've got we we yeah. Well, I don't know how to describe it, but you know, like I said, as long as they keep us not segregated, I mean, it's only through segregation that we could win. <laughs> you know, so it's almost like we have to go back to states' rights, and then we have to force all the smart people to live in one state and all the dumbasses to live in the other states. Can we win? Chanting of religious conservatism. We can say, go reason rally, huzzah. I'll see you all there. Uh, huzzah is kind of gay. <laughs> oh, and one more thing before you go. I am going to write a paper for my cultural psychology class, which is supposed to be an ethnographic interview, and I'm thinking of writing about it of someone who belongs to an atheist subculture in... Ethnographic... Uh, huh? ...in the United States. So if you would consider yourself belonging to an atheist subculture, and you don't even have to be from the United States, even if you're someone else, that would also be interesting. Uh, and you wouldn't mind me buying you coffee and talking to you about being an atheist in America or wherever else for an hour or so then let me know, especially if you're a vlogger or someone who already like semi-knows me, so I know you're not just some random psychopath, and maybe we can meet up on Saturday, and I can ask you a few questions about atheism and write a paper about you, anonymously, of course. But do let me know about that. Yeah, right. what are the odds of not being a psychopath and living close enough to bother for an hour interview? Hmm. Let's see, what are the odds? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thin. Oh, they were all done. Um, anyway, really crappy video. Really, really awful nicotine. Just, just, that was, that was horrible nonsense. That was just horrible. Look at this. It's only got 13 dislikes. 80 likes, 13 dislikes. And that was just absolutely horrible. Just made silly excuses. So, so name me, instead of naming all these dead guys, why don't you name me one current non-atheist who deserves your respect, who deserves our respect as a thinking, like anybody who thinks they're a thinking person, who, anybody who has any kind of respect for the truth, who the fuck on the theology side should we all respect as a thinker and as a logical person? Who? Who are you going to name? Venom Fang X? Who the fuck are you going to name? Oh, that's right, no one. <laughs> yeah, that's right, because anybody who's a theist with all the evidence that exists now is an idiot. They are unreasonable assholes. Period.